We are live. We are live. We are live. Yes. Yes, there we go. <laughs> and how we do it, Gary? I always go live. We, you know, start singing as soon as it says go live, but then I look up. Yeah, it's like 20 seconds delay. I think there's you looking in the camera. There's me looking like I'm chewing gum or something. I'm not. I think I've taken a bit of a bath on my teeth. But anyway, that's on the beginning of this video. <laughs> but we're live now. <laughs> so anyway, how are you, lovely Gary? I'm really good. I really good. I don't know if you um you probably did see my um I did a little on my Instagram um that. Uh, did I do a little film of the clouds in the valley round where I live here? Yes, I did. And so it was, I mean, it's quite similar today, actually. We were just sort of down here along the coast. We're just sort of like encased, literally is encased in fog. And it's like, the, if you've ever seen the film, The Fog, it was like that. It was thick and gooey. It was cold and and you know, that cold, that damp cold that gets into your bones. And it was just absolutely miserable. And I was just thinking, oh, God, you know, and just thinking, you don't know what to do with yourself. You feel I must get motivated. I've got to, um, you know, do something. Or shall I go for a walk? But, or shall I go into town and have a look at the shops? Maybe that'll distract me. Because it's just, I just, and it feels dense and you just want to throw it off. Anyway, just out of the blue, um, um, Nick just phoned me and just said, oh, he said, and he'd taken the horses out for an exercise and he was on the other side of the valley. And he goes, you won't believe it. He said, I've just climbed up the hill here with the horses and it is sunshine absolutely bright sunshine blue skies above this fog that's laying in all the valleys and actually laying down it up, up the channel in the coast so i said right so um i wasn't going to go over to the side of the valley that he was on but i thought well i'll just take the car and go up the hill and literally and i and i wrote you know um you know i climbed out of the fog to this like lovely um sort of uh uh, bright sunshine and felt so much better. And I thought that was a really good analogy for like when you're feeling all dank and down and everything, it's almost like you've got to climb out of it. You've got to climb up and get out on the plateau so you can see what it is below you. So I just thought that was a, a great thing. And I did a little, little video and you can see this foggy, it's just a cloud that's just sunk to the ground. And you can see it's all like moving in the valley. And it was just like, oh, that's really eerie. But, and again, once you got out of it, it was actually, I mean, not that we're really warm at the moment, but it was warmer up there. The temperature on the on the car, I think we went to, I think we could have gone up to 10 degrees, whereas down here it, it goes beep beep because it's gone four degrees. So it's quite low and just clammy and horror there. So yeah, I'm, that was I'm slightly disappointed though on your video that you weren't standing there singing climbers. <laughs> I didn't wear my cut. I was going to wait, make some clothes out of curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to do, I must tell you something. This is really funny. And I know we're going completely off tangent here. But um, when we get together, it's like the fam family and friends sort of all get together and the chit chatting. And uh, there is times when you think, oh, my God, what in the world that we live in? You know, what happens if the whole infrastructure that we are so used to relying upon actually collapses? What are we going to do? So we planned all of us have got our own skills. So there's people like um, that can go out hunting. There's people that can go out and actually grow vegetables. We've got a carpenter, but I'm delegated to make us all clothes. Well, actually uniforms. We'll all be having uniforms because we'll be like this little cult and we'll have uniforms made out of all the curtains I've stripped down from the windows and I've made everyone garments. So that's, that's what we're doing. If apocalyptic version of <laughs> Gary's world, I'm down, it's uniforms. I might even make like little jaunty hats as well. So that <laughs> You know those followers that we've been gaining? Um, I I think we've just lost yeah. <laughs> Julianne's here. Hey, Julianne. <laughs> Julianne's laughing anyway. Um, he's crazy. <laughs> Uh, morning, Julianne. Um, good morning. Good morning, Julianne. Yeah, so, okay, well, we've just lost all of our followers, so I may as well just carry on now. <laughs> no, we have We love you, Gary. Love you, Gary. Uh, how I love you. How I love you, Gary. Uh, Teasier. Teasier. Little drawing exercise coming up, people, with a bit of mindfulness. Mm. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. I'm sure we're going to get 9 million likes after that story that you just gave us there. <laughs> um, and um, 
yeah, we would love to have your company on our regular YouTube channel. Of course, if you are a serious sewist, we have got so much on the channel for you because we've got blocks and patterns and projects and things to make some classes. We've got some great interviews. Even Pat Sloan featured on this channel. She's probably wishing she doesn't right now. Uh, but <laughs> Pat Sloan, quilt extraordinaire from America, features on this channel. So do check out our lovely playlist. But of course, in our tea time tutorials, because it is tea time uh, Gary and I have a little play every Friday and he basically tries to teach me something today he's taught me a few things about him but he tries to teach <laughs> me something in the art world or the sewing world uh, because I run Crafty Monkeys and we thought why not learn some of the skills that you teach not I teach other people teach so today we're going to do some mindful drawing and I'm going to put the time codes below so you can skip all this nonsense and go straight to it right now but we've mentioned mindful. I think we've kind of done the mindfulness there. But, you know, just picking up on what you were saying there, Gary, very interesting, because I did once read a little thing that said, you know, remember the bright blue sky, the ones that you saw and the one yeah. that you see on the plane is always there. It's just sometimes it's covered by cloud, but those clouds will go. And that is such a good metaphor for life. Such mm. a good metaphor that that sky is always there, that blue is always there, the sun is always there. You've just got to find it, as you say. You just have to change your position, change your outlook, change the way you're looking at things, and yeah. then you will see that blue sky. And that leads me to an Instagram story that I did this morning, which I just saw Mick Jagger singing, which, believe me, at eight o'clock in the morning, having his face in your <laughs> face was white. But he was just doing the line, you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you might just find you get what you need. And it's very, that is so apt with that cloudy day there that you yeah. can't always get what you want. You can't always get a beautiful sunny day. Of course, in real life, it might be you can't get your mortgage paid off. You can't get this, you can't get that. But you can get what you need. And so if you have to find a different perspective, look at things in a different way, you can get what you need. You can find that bit of blue sky. It's not the Mediterranean, but you can find that blue sky and still have a lovely view. And it's like with the house, yes, your mortgage is not going to be paid off, but you do need a roof over your head. And so if you've got that roof over your head, you get what you need, mm. not what you want. And I read something from the day that there was a, a film where there was a guy, I think there's an end scene of a film where, or the beginning scene, where he gets everything he wants. He gets the girls, he gets the food, he gets the beers, he gets everything he wants. And his life is amazing. And he thinks, I'm in heaven. And then by the end of the film, he realizes that actually he was in hell because he got everything he wanted. And that meant that he didn't learn, that he couldn't appreciate the highs because he didn't have the lows. So all you need sometimes is to get what you need. And on occasion, you'll get what you want. Very true. Very true, isn't it? Well, it's a good analogy of life, what life yeah. does. Yeah. You know? And now I feel like getting up and doing a bit of a Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> he's amazing. I just amazing that he's still, you know, he's still up there, still doing his he's stuff. Still looking it. I mean, he probably has to take a couple of ibuprofen once he's finished, but <laughs> I can tell you something about him. My hairdresser, friend. <laughs> It's not, I, it's not in my hair for a while now, but I've known him for 26 years. Uh, he does Mick Jagger's hair. And once he cancelled Mick Jagger to do my hair because Mick Jagger rang him and he went, I can't do you, I'm doing Rachel. I thought, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. He's like, oh, she. Uh, but he did go to his house to do his hair and he listens to classical music when he has his hair done. Does he? Allegedly mm. on occasion. Please do not take this legitimate. Mick Jagger, please don't sue me. <laughs> but there you go. But yeah, true. He did, did his hair and he has listened to classical music. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Should we start drawing? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's just a little drawing project. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still and, doing Mick Jagger. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And you have, you know, Rachel, actually, you've got to take the, the credit for this project, this idea, because you said, you in the week, you said, because I last, when we come to the end of last Friday, no, I, don't, I haven't planned anything. And then you said, oh, I've just seen this thing where it's just, it's about drawing lampshades from your little book, 365 Days of Creativity. Yay! It's a great, great book, people. I can it's a great totally book. Recommend it. We can put like Ashley. We can put the details of that in the in the information under this, so that yes. if anyone wants to, if they, you know, it's a great little Ashley. It's a great stocking filler. Um, you know, as in a little gift for Christmas. If you do like doodling and doing things, um, yeah. put that on your list. Put that on your list and get that for Christmas because I think it's a really good one. There's a couple, and I've got the one which is. 365 days art project so I've got there's two different ones and they're very very similar and they are 
really inspirational because they're great if you think oh what can I do I've got nothing you know maybe the brain isn't being creative enough so just go and have a look in that click through some pages you don't have to work from one page right through to the other you can cherry pick which ones you want to do so it's fine anyway you said what about do some lampshades to create or just doodle some lampshades and you showed me a sheet of paper which I've recreated which is literally we've I've just printed out or drawn three light bulbs hanging from a string, hanging from a string like this. And we're going to put this on in the Crafty Monkey shop. Is that right, Rachel? Yes, it will go. It's not there yet, but it will go in. So by the time anybody's watching this, if it's tomorrow, it'll be there. Um, but uh, yes, it's a little template. But as you can see, you can just draw them anyway. But well, You could just draw them easily. Yeah. But some people, just in case like, oh my God, that I can't draw light bulbs. It's there for you. It's a free, yeah. just download it and then you can do that. I'm going to get actually, Rachel, I'll get you just to flick the screen back behind me, because that also made me think about not just we're going to draw some um, lampshade, but um, I hear. Can you see? Yes. I, I, so these I don't know if anyone's ever seen these online, but you can get lampshade kit. So if this really, really inspires you and I haven't got any shares in the lampshade kit, this is literally you'll have to search. them. I think I found mine on Amazon, but you can find them in haberdashery shops. And it's a kit to make a lampshade. So okay. if I just like that. So you get the kit, you get the wires, the top, the bottom, and then you get this like sort of, it's like um, sort of an acetate uh, with glue on it that you bond the fabric on. So yes, you can just use, maybe you're doing your interior, you're doing your upholstery or you're doing cushions and you want a, um, a lampshade to match. You can do that. But I took that a little bit further and then actually I just put, some like this is up in my bedroom which has got sort of a country sort of um equestrian -y type theme in my bedroom I'll let your imagination work on that one but um <laughs> my <laughs> but, so oh, I've got, like, I've got the, you in jodhpurs and riding boots now this is this is not good at this time in the morning <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's now really intrigued, don't they? Anyway, so I've done sort of like, so we've got where I live up on the Exmoor and everything. We've got the, obviously, we've got the nice red stag here and we've got all the grasses and that growing along. I mean, I've represented the hills and mountains that we talked about earlier. The pheasants are there everywhere at the moment, crazy pheasants and obviously hares and rabbits and things like that. But by doing this exercise, this drawing exercise, you could think, oh, I want to take this a little bit further. I wouldn't mind actually if I could create this on. A lampshade. So it is possible, I'm going to put that back behind me, it is possible to actually create your own lampshades and make them as fun and funky as you want to. Anyway, yeah. that's me digressing, giving you far too much information on this channel. I think we need to go back. <laughs> we need to go back to the lampshades. Let's go back to the, let's do it, choose a drawing. <laughs> so just three, I'm going to choose three and you can choose three as well, Rachel. And I just say, I'm going to, I'll start with one and then I'll let you do one and we can then work on ever. And you can just choose any theme you want to. And you've got your little light bulb here. You can use pens and you can use papers. I'm going to use a bit of paper on one of them. Um, glue, you can glue it down. I've got my felt tips out again and I know you've got your felt tips. I thought the first one, because I thought it was quite key with our sort of like our mindful um, sort of uh, celestial thing. And I thought we'd do like a sort of a, a solar system one, which is really, really easy to do. So a solar system lampshade, I imagine, if you imagine all those, you know, when you see on a celestial solar system chart and they're all sort of like circling the sun. Well, imagine that the light bulb is the sun. And so imagine all the planets going around. So they're just sort of like elliptical, almost like just scribbles oh, around great yes <laughs> so you can do that but then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just do like little circles just randomly different size circles maybe some bigger ones some smaller ones some that have got little circles off of them like that and they are going to represent my planets around my um my lampshade and you, you know it could be possible i mean maybe give the idea to ikea and they might do it for us but it could be possible that you could have um just wire, like have some sort of wire. If you bought one of those, especially if you bought one of those kits, you could just use the wire around it to then just then support your little planets. You could, it is possible to do that. So I'm sure IKEA have come up with the idea already. So I'm just gonna, you can see, I've just done dots and colored them in with my felt tips. I love my felt tips. There you are. Right, so that's my one. That's my celestial planets. 
what are you going to do, Rachel? What you said, you had a couple of ideas, what you were going to do. I've already just asked mine. Have you? Let's have a look. I have, I have. Hang on, let me just, let, let, hang on. Artist in residence here in the process. Hang on. Dee, dee, dee. Oh, I'm singing Christmas songs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. And Wait there. a second. Right. Is it going to be a big, the big reveal? The big okay. reveal. So here we go. Um, I will. I'll add the spotlight so we can see both. Yes. So what I've done is this, and I thought this could be wire, and you could thread your wire through paper. So you could use papers yeah. um, or you could use fabrics if you wanted. So you could do little blocks even, um, you know, and then just sort of wire them all together somehow. Or you could use a thread and then some wire in the back of the fabric and bend the wire and then bend, you know, your fabrics into place. And then you just yeah. create, you could go as what you know, as round as you want there, keep going. Um, I thought that nice. would be really cool. Yeah. Is there so is it a wire frame that you've made there and then you're weaving the fabric through the wire, the circles in the wire frame? Yeah, you could do that. You could, do you know what you could do? You yeah. could actually use chicken wire. So you could take a section of chicken wire, you might yeah. cut it out into a small square or to a, a circle, and then fix your light bulb through it, and then crush your chicken wire around the bulb. Not so it doesn't have to touch the bulb, but it could we well, could try. <laughs> and then, Yes. You could weave in an outfit. All you'd have to be aware of that it didn't, that the bulbs didn't get too hot so that it didn't um, obviously uh, catch the uh, the fabric alight. But actually with the new, like the new low energy bulbs, they don't necessarily get as hot. Do you remember the old bulbs used to get quite hot when we used to take them out with the filament bulbs? They yeah. get quite hot. But the new lighter, um, the ones that are energy efficient are much more cooler so that you can use them for that. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's, um, I, I'm feeling very, well, I feel, a, I feel a bit floral. So I'm thinking of doing one round one of mine. I'm going to do lots of like, I'm going to just do a circle of nice sort of flowers. So I'm just going to do sort of some circles, some just some circles. And then I'm just going to do some nice sort of petal shapes, remembering that on flowers, it's not four petals, it's five petals or uneven numbers of petals around one, two, three, four, five, and then it's a round, and then you've got something there to just colour in. So I'm just going to do that. Yeah, I'm still going. Around. I'm still going on my first one. You're still going on your first one. So I've got, I've, I can see I can put another flower in there. And I'm trying, when I do the flower, when I'm doing it behind, I'm thinking that the petals are going to go behind. They're going to go behind the, the actual bulb. So I'm thinking about what I'm doing. I'm going to get my, I love getting these felt tips out. I don't use them enough, really. I used to use these big, broad felt tips when we were just doing very quick fashion illustrations on a template. And I must do that with you one day, um, <laughs> where you just have a template of a body and you just draw garments. Yes, that would be fabulous. That would be fantastic. And I think it's just a really nice, it's a quick way. And it's it, your mind and your imagination can run riot when you do yeah. things like that. So it's quite nice. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the colours. Because if I do all pink petals, they're all going to look all a bit the samey-samey. Though, I need odd numbers up there. Right, right, get that in there. Like that, pink flowers um, and pink, what else should we do? I think we do um, orange, no, not orange, blue. I think blue is gonna stand out better. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. That's not too bad, not too bad. Okay, Rachel, what are you doing now? What's that other one down there at the bottom then? What's okay, that? So what I'm doing here, can you just make sure it's in camera? Yeah, so I'm just doing three, rounds here so this would be you would back this we should say to people as oh. well we should say to people yes we are designing lampshades here but we're not this is not so we can design and make lampshades and start talking about sewing this is so that we can have fun and, and we're doing a mindful process that's what this and is and yeah letting your imagination run right and as well letting your imagination run right so i've done three so these would be you know a stiff what would you put on the back of a fabric to make it um so you know, to make it like a lampshade, you know, like you've made okay. your lampshade. Yeah, so you could use the stuff that's there, which is like a sort of an, um, uh, an, a glued acetate that you could bond it to, and it, you could glue the fabric round, fold it over, and then make circles with that. You can also use um, something called buckram as well. And that's used, you'll find that in like pelmets above wind, like um, 
curtain so to create a pelmet tie back stuff like that it's very stiff sometimes it comes with a, again a bonded glue that you heat you heat the surface of it with the fabric on it and it bonds the fabric to it and then you can then trim away and make it all neat and tidy so you could use something like that as well um and also the other thing you can like people say well how do i make really nice sharp roller blinds out of a, a piece of fabric where well, you can actually get a like it's almost like a sort of a starchy cum glue that you actually paint on the fabric mm -hmm. leave it to dry and it will go completely crisp absolutely crisp and dry i've done similar with um, wallpaper paste and dipping fabric into wallpaper paste and then create the molding shapes from it leaving it to dry somewhere like um you know, like not probably on your radiator, but if you've got somewhere warm, like a bubble cooker or somewhere like that, it takes some time to dry. But once it's thoroughly dry, it is really stiff. It is as stiff as cardboard because okay. the glue. <laughs> and again, wallpaper paste is a cellulose glue, so it tends to dry quite well. And again, you could use something like that to create shapes and things and mold things like that. So you could do that. I'm going to just use the last one that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of collage. And I picked up this the other day and it's like, you know how we're drawn to sort of like Christmassy themed things. And these are cool. They've got a good name, Winter Wonderland. And they're all little themed papers. And I thought, oh, that's good. Because, you know, I like doing collage and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, that yeah. was quite fun to have. So yeah. you could just go through, look at the papers. And then you could always just choose one that you think, oh, that's quite Christmassy or quite, I like the pattern. It doesn't have to be Christmas themed. It could be other papers. This one looks quite light. I'm just going to tear that one out. Almost looks like a little bit like a could be on a jumper or something like that. And again, what you could do, similar to what you're doing, is actually create a little staggered amount of over the lampshade. So you could go one, two, three. So it's sort of like made it smaller and bigger. So you could like one on top of the other like that. And of course, so you could have a lampshade that was like that, but actually I've got lampshades in the house. Actually then have the lower part then goes narrower again. So you could like put that under there. I wish I had okay. some glue because I've just had an idea, but I haven't got any glue. What? Have you not got your prick stick? Have you got a prick stick there? No, I haven't got one. I haven't, I haven't got one here, which is a real shame. Because what I was thinking was, um, I mean, I've just had, I've just had two ideas. You see, this is what happens. The information <laughs> starts flowing. But basically, for me, I wish I had some print stick. <laughs> because I've got just some tinsel. Yeah. What I, think, what I would do is I was thinking, you know, I would just literally start just with my print stick, start just um, collaging, as you were saying, and layering. Oh, so tinsley bits. You could almost like make a little fringe hanging from that. Could yes. be quite fun, couldn't you? Yes. But do you know that what? I'll just rude. pretend. I'll just pretend that. Um, just pretend. That I've got Brit stick there. But yeah, that would be great fun, actually. And it would just be a fringe, a fabulous fringed lampshade. Because my other idea was I was actually going to draw feathers and I was going to make a feather lampshade. Oh, you mentioned, yeah, the feather. You mm. got that idea as well. So I think as a mindful drawing to just draw um, feathers would be lovely, actually. That looks nice, Rachel. I like that. I like the uh, mm. collaging bits. Especially at this time, we've, I mean, I haven't quite decorated the house for Christmas as yet, but I've got all my boxes of stuff out, so that's going to be soon. And there's always bits and pieces or stuff that's at the bottom of the box that perhaps is slightly broken through over the year. It's all been crushed down on top of each other or something. But I think, well, what can I do with it? But you could just save little bits and you could do use this in your little a little mindful doodle, a little bit of fun. Or like exactly. last week, we, you know, you could make it, uh, put it on a card or something like that or do that. So that'd be nice. Yeah, so, yeah. What you mustn't do now, Rachel, is sneeze, because that's just going to, like... <laughs> <laughs> or laugh too much. Just like, or laugh too much, exactly. Which is likely on this channel with you, because I laugh. <laughs> you see a lovely comment we got from Rachel that. last week. She was such a sweetie. She wrote underneath, you two are good people. Well, that's always nice to hear. And she yeah. said, 
make me laugh. And she said, and she's called Rachel. So she said, so whenever Gary says, Rachel, how are you getting on? Should I always go, oh, I'm doing quite well, Gary. <laughs> so she thought I was talking to her as well, which is quite nice too, yeah, wasn't it? It was lovely. Gosh. Ta-da! This is great. Who knew that? We need a zoom in. We need a zoom in for that. Zoom in. <laughs> Let's have a look. I'll do a zoom in at the end. Fab. This is such good fun. And in the page in the book, mm. you know, she's got something like twenty lamps that you. But hers is. Yes. You know, yeah. But hers is. It, like I say, it's all about. It's a mindful practice. It's just about having fun. I'm sure that for her, she's just literally suggesting doodling and drawing squiggles. But we've taken. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think, and I like to give myself a lot of space because sometimes my my creations and my ideas can sort of like go out of the. You know, I need space in the page, and the bigger yeah. the piece that I'm a piece of paper or something that I'm working on the more fun and the more extravagant I'll get so if they're just small if they're done, if I put too, too many lamps or bulbs hanging down on this little A4 page I don't think it would give for me personally and, and for what you're doing you wouldn't have had enough space you would have been confined by yeah. a small area because you've got a bigger area <laughs> you can actually make your creations that much more fun and that much more bigger I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put. Actually, this. Just... I mean, I could just keep going with this, and really make the most amazing lamp show you've ever seen. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Watch out! But there you go. There you are. That's it. I love that lamp show. Let me just take this out of the holder and just show you it close up. Ta -da! What a fabulous Ta -da! lamp show that would be! And those are. Oh, I can yeah, see that now. Squares. Yeah. yeah. The squares yeah. of fabric or papers, all on wires, draped down, and you'd yeah. bend the wires. Yeah. You could um corkscrew the wire around the top and then bend the wires down yes. and thread those yeah. fabrics through. And then that That's one was good. just these stiff fabrics um in a you know a round and then just swap up the um the patterns. Yeah. Which so, is actually it's quite similar. That's the one that, similar to what I've done at the bottom here, which is sort yes. of like just like like um, sections going round yeah. the, the bowl. Mine, yours goes as a sort of a pyramid shape. Mine then has a smaller piece on the bottom, so that's fine. But no, yeah. actually, really successful. Fine, very good. That's great. Yeah, just something fun Aww. to do. So hopefully, if anyone else if they're watching and they're like, go and have a go, just download that template for free. Just pull it off, and even if you get Again, as we always say, it's uh, not just a mindful thing to do on your own. You might want to bring some of the family in. So if you've got grandchildren, children, um, people staying with you or whatever, and say, oh, come on, let's just sit around the table and do something fun. It's there to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's fabulous. It's great fun. And Juliana said, got to love him. I'm in the middle of the dreaded decluttering, not only my craft room, but my little flat too. I'd rather watch you both. Oh, just watch us, Julian. Just watch <laughs> us and then get back to the decluttering later on. Well, that's very apt because that is actually, I've been doing a bit of decluttering as well, sort of in the mood for, I find it very cathartic. I yeah. love it to have a good old clear out. Um, and I know you had a good, you've had, you have a good clear out and they had a chuck out. A chuck out. I but, had a um, chuck out. I'm not kidding. You know, I because I went through these crates of um, arts and crafty stuff, um, but it was stuff that I just don't use anymore. It was a lot of things, um, yeah. you know, sort of stamps and things that I just don't, you know, I don't don't use. And I just thought, you know what? It's been in the box. What was it, Marie? What's that? What's that lady's name? The big tidier, Maria something. Oh gosh, well, yes, yes. And she always says, keep things in your life that bring you joy. You have to touch them, and if they don't bring you joy, chuck them in the bin. Well, obviously. You know, you're going to keep your washing up liquid, aren't you? It's not going to bring you joy, but keep it. But <laughs> she's got a point. And I think if you haven't used something in your wardrobe or worn it for a year, chuck it. And I did that with the craft stuff. I looked at these three massive boxes and there was stuff that I needed to put in the boxes and they were filled with stuff. And I thought, get rid of the stuff. And I just put it into bags and I put it into recycling. So it's all been recycled. And yeah. then I was able to declutter the house. And it makes a huge difference. I, I mean, they yeah. do talk about energy flow, don't they, through the house? But I think there is an energy flow, but I think it's in here. It's in here. You just feel so much better when you've done it. 
yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so um yeah and i mean if it, i mean you don't have to throw, not don't have to literally throw it in the dustbin what you can do is just take drop it off at the charity shop and yeah. actually let, let them make the decision of what they keep and what they don't because they don't keep everything and there are things that they just know won't sell and so then they go to land not landfill but to the recycling center so but exactly. again definitely definitely really good yeah well that is a very good exercise there gary i have thoroughly enjoyed myself this morning i, I feel like yeah. going off and making that lampshade right now and having it as my <laughs> festive my festive christmas lampshade yes but, you, know, you could because if you bought a, a three pound plain lampshade from one of these pound shop places and you went and got some a row of a thing of tinsel mm. you could absolutely glue that onto the outer of that cheap lampshade and just make it your christmas lampshade somewhere yeah yeah i think you can do it on lamp, often... like a little bedside lamp <laughs> Like that. Oh, look at you. I can see your mind working. Look out. <laughs> look out, pound shop. I'm coming. You're making your own little crafty monkey grotto, aren't you? <laughs> you see next week, there'll be a lamp here behind me. Major tinsel. And then, you know, um, I mean, you can get inspiration from the Scandinavian countries where it gets darker quicker in this northern hemisphere. And, um, you know, it does get darker. And I think bringing lamps in and little lights and things like that and making the lamps fun because, you know, we it's, it's not bright outside. So let's bring some lamps in and let's pimp, pimp our lamps. <laughs> so today we've talked about you being in a cult, pimping, <laughs> and you wearing jodhpurs in the bedroom. I we've think been we taken off air. We're we should... off air. <laughs> right okay i think it's time to end this youtube before this nonsense continues um so thank you so much lovely youtuber for watching um i hope you've enjoyed it please do leave us a comment underneath we do read them if you do feel like buying us a coffee you can always donate to the channel and press the buy a coffee button i think it's two pounds gary is it worth two pounds were our lampshades worth two pounds um but if not we would just love to have your company so please press the like button and hit the subscribe button too. And then you'll know when we're going live because we go live every Friday or we load every Friday. If we can't make it live, Gary and I, we will load a video for you. Um, so next week, it'll be another doodling exercise. Do you know what, Gary, next week, I'd quite like to have a go at the dresses on a body. Okay, but, um, yeah. Or do you have another okay. idea? Do you have another idea? No, 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 we can do dresses on a body. Yeah, we can do dresses on a body. What we need to also do, um, what we were going to do what I had in mind was that I want to do um, how I was going to ask the rest of the tutors. Yes. To give us tips on how to save for or do things, what they do, either save money or little things that they make for people at Christmas time. Yes. OK. Do you know what? Let's see if we can get that done as well. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll do some drawing on a body and we'll also yeah. do... Um, how to um, save money at Christmas by giving, making gifts for people or doing things. So let's yeah, we'll little do some things. homework. Yeah. yeah, do some homework and see, see what we can get with that. Or yeah. games, like you say. Brilliant. Yeah, fabulous. Right then. Well, thank you so much, Gary. Have yourself right. a wonderful day. Thank you, YouTuber, for watching. You have a wonderful day as well. And we will see you next time on our Tea Time tutorial. I'm now <laughs> ending stream, hopefully, because Gary and I often keep chatting, you know. And then we sit there going, we're not live, are we? We're not live. <laughs> right. Bye. 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 <laughs>